lounging, son. Welcome back to the Comic Lounge. My name's Ryan. And I'm Manny. And we're back with another episode of the Weekly Poll, talking about our favorite books of the week. Uh, got a lot of good stuff. This was a, another pretty pretty decent week I, I, in terms of size of my polls. But a lot of number ones, a lot of number ones. And a lot yeah, of yeah, actually, you know, actually, you mentioned it like every pick of my like, stuff is number yeah, one. Yeah, dude. Funny yeah. enough, you're right, dude. Almost, almost everything I bought was a number one this week. Yeah, I actually, I, yeah, I didn't I, even I, realize that until just now. Good fucking point, bro. Yeah, I, I'm actually. I can. I had the rest of my pull over here, and more than half of it was a number one. Only four of them were returning. You know, so I'm very excited to get into some of these things. Um. We have a couple books that we both read, our mutual picks. So let's let's jump into it with clobbering time, dude. That book was fucking phenomenal. Uh, Steve yeah. Scrooge I mean, and uh, uh-huh. on pencils, writing, well, just story and art. Like they don't, I don't, I don't know the difference between pencil and, and ink with him. I don't know if because if he's doing it digitally, probably no difference. But Brian Valenza on colors and Joe Sabino on letters. This book, it's insanity, dude. I mean, this is like. There's a book he came out with from Image not that long ago. I can't remember the name of it for the life of me, but um, it just blew me away. And, you know, he's somebody that, like, has worked on The Matrix, right? He did storyboards along with Jeff Darrow. Yeah. Just- That's really where I first noticed him because all the talk of him doing the storyboards. And I think he did do a couple of Matrix comics for, like, when the Wachowskis had, like, the Burly Man comics. And they did, he like- also did Doc Frankenstein. That's right, yeah, which was also one of their titles. That's right. Mm-hmm. So first off, the opening page with this watcher with this fucking gun, dude. Like, what is that? <laughs> dude, it's, it's it's amazing, bro. And like, already the the tone is being set, you know, like for what we're gonna read. So I, I was on board by by like the by the time I finished reading these three word balloons that the watcher is speaking, I was I was already sold. I mean, I was sold on this. I mean, we talked about it. Like, as soon as this was announced, like months ago, I already knew it was gonna be a pick. Like, you know, yeah. like. His art to me is is up there with like Daniel Warren Johnson and Jeff Darrow as like someone that is really sort of doing something that's hyper detailed with a ton of energy. Yeah. So I'm always gonna pick up anything that he draws. Yeah, I love the way that they they pan into the into the shot. You know. Yes, dude. Like that's really dope too. His, I love his depiction of thing. Like the way it takes a certain kind of artist to do a really good thing because like the way yeah. the rocks come, it can, sometimes it looks like a little too smooth, which I don't really think it should look that way, but he does a really, really good thing. And I like that. It's like, he's sitting, so they're sitting in like a diner of what looks like a diner. I don't know, because then they're in the lab. <laughs> Mr. Fantastic. I think, a, I think they have a diner booth in the lab. Where okay. So Mr. Fantastic isn't like even that. like his body's there and his head's just stretched out. And then obviously Hulk, but in, in banner form, right? Or yeah. sitting there. And Hulk and, and uh Thing have a long history of like fighting, right? But this yes. isn't a battle between them, it's a team up, which is something yes. I don't think we really get. I, I mean I can't remember a time when they've teamed up. So not 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 just by themselves, you know, like like uh, on this kind of level. Like it, you know, and and uh this reminds me of like it's you know, it's obviously a callback to like the the old school like thing two in one series that Marvel used to do back in the day where it was always Ben Grimm and someone else teaming up mm-hmm. and having like adventures, you know, like I'm a huge Ben Grimm fan too. So that yeah. was an added like, you know, bonus. And and you're right, like he draws a thing perfectly with like enough texture. So like he's probably one of the better artists to draw the, the thing in, in a very long time. And this fucking like Iron Man looking looking guy with like an amalgamation of of like a Doctor Doom also. Yes, dude, I love the design of that character. Yeah, and it, I, I I'm very curious. It's a good it's a good setup as to like who he is and what he is. You know, like he's it's a very striking image, mm-hmm. and it's it's a story that gets. What I love about it too is that like he's not just uh Steve's not just a, a great uh artist. He's also a really good writer, man. Because mm-hmm. this story starts and it just gets going right away. And it wastes no time. It's like, there, you know, like it, it uses every scene to further the story, like, you know, with its action. Like, again, you know, we, we were talking about, we were talking about like, um, uh, do a power bomb, how that comic uses action to, to push the narrative forward. This is another example of that. I mean, even with the title, Clobber in Time, you know, like it's, it, it tells you all you need to know 
right mm-hmm. off the bat and it, it hits the ground running man it's it's fantastic there's so many so many pages you know the story is basically ben and uh you know thing and hulk get pulled into uh uh some kind of uh world where they need to defend these sort of defenseless creatures against a very huge kaiju like monster and you know then you just throw them in there and you know the fucking fighting starts man yeah i just and, i uh, wonder who this guy is in this suit cuz like he says how like he grew up loving them and then hating them and uh with good reason right and then in in a deca millennium is what he says the yeah. the wasteland tribes will worship you like gods sadly those those wastelanders are dumb as they come and then he strands them and he's the one that strands them in this world right like kind of a mix between I don't know. It looks like in a, to me, it's almost like a Lord of the Rings, like, but with a sci-fi bend, kind of like, like to the left, like you see all these like mushrooms and stuff and like these weird creatures and looks like, but then, but there's also techno technological stuff going on also. That's not, I wouldn't say is like Lord of the Rings, but I like that, dude. I like the, the, the creatures in here. These pages are just I mean, dude. I mean, th- this page here. I I think I, I had posted it, and I think I had sent it to several people. Like that that two page spread is probably one of the most amazing things I've seen in a long time from Marvel. Like it's it's just the the sheer carnage and like I even see like like um this I I forget, I forget who the artist is, but the guy that draw that drew like the rat fink and that kind of art, like that kind of like you know rock and roll art. There's yeah, even yeah. a bit of that in his art. You know what I mean? Like the way like. This here with the creature's eyes bulging out, like he's he's really doing something else with that man. And it's it's a very funny series too. It, there's a lot of sense of humor, which when you have Ben Grimm, like you you want to have that vibe to it because like he's you know Ben is a, a he's a superhero, but he's also kind of like a sad sack, you know, and like he's always having all this shit happen to him, and like there, there's an element of that to his personality, and like like. Uh, he brings that out in it too. Like it's 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 such a good comic, man. It's yeah. it's so fun. You know what's interesting? We've never seen the thing bleed, right? No, Ever? we've seen him cut up before. Like I know he's been like scarred. He was scarred by Wolverine back in the nineties when he but, wore that iron mask for a while. But blood? But no, like, I, I mean at least like that the I way, can remember. Yeah, the way that he shows him here, like bloody dude. You know what I mean? Like chunks taken out of him, but there's actual. It, it looks like it's blood soaked, you know. I don't know how else to yeah. describe it, but like, and there's a celestial in here. This fucking book, dude, is just like, I I don't know. It's just it, you look at the cover, and you can see, at at first glance, you might think, oh man, this clobbering time. Like, what is this book? Like, people might pass it by. Like, I even had to talk to my buddy who came into the show right before I was leaving yesterday. Um, he comes in. And, he, and he's like, hey, so what's up with the cover? And he's like, should I get it? I'm like, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Steve Scrochy, dude. Like, yeah, of course dude. you should get it. I was like, look at the interiors of this book. And he starts floating. He's like, all right. And like, and he picked up the copy. You know, I was like, dude, this book is, this is what we talked about when we were talking about uh, like Marvel and DC taking, uh, not take, I don't want to say taking a chance, but like, you know, doing more books like this standalone that aren't connected to the overall continuity of what's going on in the main line of the books and letting a, one creator tell their vision you know what i mean like they did, it, they, did it, they did it with dr strange uh the final sunrise recently they Chad did it Moore. with daniel warren yeah Chad Moore. they did it with daniel warren johnson on the beta ray bill like i love those kind of projects man you're and you're right like it's it's we we need to see more of them and and uh you know we have actually been seeing quite a few from marvel i mean those three right there have been out in the last couple of years so if you if you want more of this uh kind of stuff coming out like just just buy it man because you know your dollar is what marvel notices the most you know like not 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 what you say so definitely support it man like these these are the kind of projects that like are gonna keep i think mainstream comics like this vital you know like you don't need to be buying every crossover uh you know continuity title but you have these projects it's gonna keep keep that 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 fun vibe alive man and and anyone with even a passing knowledge of Ben Grimm and the Hulk can enjoy this title. Like, you know, it, it drops you right in and you just go with it and you have a lot of fun. It's, it's my favorite book of the week. And I can already tell you that uh, if, if uh, the vibe in this first issue continues, 
it's a contender for like top book of a year for me. You know, I, I, think it'll pro- I think it'll probably be in my picks for the year. Yeah. I mean, look, I, don't, I, I was going to say this book has no business being that much fun, but it kind of does, you know, like Hulk and thing teaming up should be this kind of a book. Hey, do it. Exactly, man. Exactly. Like, like you don't want like, you know, obviously you can, uh, um, you know, you can have a lot of tragedy to both these characters. Cause like, you know, like they're, you know, men yeah. dealing with a lot of physical issues, but when you put them together in this kind of environment, you just want to see Hulk and Thing fighting a bunch of fucking cool looking monsters. And, and he does it and he doesn't, it's, it's like smart enough in the writing that it's not like dumb or boring to read and it's well executed. And it's just, it's just great superhero comics, man. I mean, that's really the bottom line. And the art is fantastic, man. The art is the selling point, but it's not the only thing that is good about this book. Yeah, Scrochy's doing Kirby proud too. I mean, these are two of Kirby's greatest creations, and you know Kirby's yeah. gonna be looking down on this and like smiling because, like, look, I mean, so many people have said that Kirby definitely put a lot of himself in some of his characters, right? And I think that that's definitely true for Thing and Hulk. I think probably the most Thing might be the most, you know, like like yeah. he's, you know he's a guy that grew up kind of like you know hard knock life on the streets, you know, he's like he's like lovable but rough you know like i mean yeah. that, that's the things that make ben Grimm such a great character and and in the right hands he's one of my favorite characters from marvel you know and, and i'm glad to see him being given this kind of treatment yeah i definitely think that this is uh just it's tied for my favorite book of the week because i read one more comic this morning that was a last minute addition to my picks that just kind of blew oh, me away we'll get into I'm it i'm excited you know? to hear that but yeah. this book was probably the most fun I've had reading a comic book in a little bit. You know what I mean? In terms of like new yeah. stuff coming out, obviously like I, I not to say that I don't have fun reading comics, but it's nice to, it's like a breath of fresh air, you know, to yes. kind of just read something like this and just for the pure joy and fun of comics. That's what this is. And like there, there there's room for this. So Marvel and DC should like take notice. And I hope that, you know, people are turning up to pick this book up because obviously like, you know, I think, and I'm I've been guilty of it too. When you know it's a mini series, do you just wait for the trade? Because you know exactly. at that point, if it's a mini series, you know that it's going to be collected. Right. Everything is collected sooner now. than later, you know. Yeah, so, everything but, is collected but, now, so it's like you don't have to necessarily run to pick it up. But like you also said, um, when the sales are there in the single issues, not just in the trade, that's how we get more projects like this. So mm-hmm. definitely get out there and pick the book up. It is a lot of fun. I, yeah, it's it's a it's a guaranteed hit, man. Yeah. It's 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 a no brainer. I've been looking forward to it for weeks, and I'm glad that it finally came out. Yeah, it definitely delivered. All right. All right. So I want to talk about another one of my favorite books this week. Next, which is Unstoppable Doom Patrol by Dennis Culver, Chris Burnham. The, oh man, I I, I didn't even realize that came out because my shop didn't get it. I guess. But I love the Doom Patrol. I have loved the Doom Patrol since I think my first interaction with the team was in JLA Year One by Mark Wade and Brian Kitson when they had Doom Patrol in there for a couple issues. They teamed up. And then I just was like, oh, what's this weird team? And then I eventually went back and like, you know, sporadically would get runs if they if they had them. But Grant Morrison obviously is one of the high water marks, right? Yeah. And, and uh, I haven't read the entire entirety of that run i've read the first two collections so i still have to read the third one but i love the team we were just talking about two tragic characters this is a team of tragedy you know yeah every single one of these people are outcasts even somebody like is like elastigirl who on the surface you know she doesn't or elasta woman i'm sorry elasta woman she on the surface doesn't look like she should be an outcast but she perceives herself as an outcast because she was a star in film, right? And like now she mm-hmm. like she just looks at herself differently. So even from the outside looking in, like people they just are dealing with tragedy. And I think that this new iteration, um, while has the core, you have Robot Man, you have Negative Man, the last woman, you have the chief. But the chief, I love the spin on this. It's not uh, Doctor Calder, it's Crazy Jane. So one of her personalities. If you don't know Crazy oh, Jane, wow. if you don't know Crazy Jane, she has she has multiple personality disorders. So she like is a different character all the time. So this new one is her as the chief. And she's like the point, the point man for the team, which is cool. And then a new character called Beast Girl. So we're dealing with the after effects of you know Lazarus Planet 
there's a whole new set of metahumans on the, on earth now because of that it was kind of like the terrigen mist with you know the inhumans right a little similar to that um but at the same time different so th they're basically this is almost kind of like a little bit x-men like because they're now going and seeking out these people to kind of save them so that they're not being experimented on and stuff like that like people are signing up with this uh with this um corporation thinking that they're going to help them and they end up being test subjects and being exploited so they're the the whole setup of this one this first issue is they're going to gotham they're going to save this one metahuman right and the humor in this book is phenomenal like i've read a little bit of dennis culver stuff but i now i want to go read more because i loved this first issue uh the dynamic between the teammates is funny the negative man which I don't, I don't remember ever seeing this, but he now can communicate with the negative spirit. So he'll hear him inside of his head, which I don't think has oh, wow. ever been done before. And Beast Girl is a little bit different too. Like she can communicate with people's, uh, like the lizard part of their brain. So she can control like certain like emotions in them, which is, a, I mean, I've never seen that power before either. Uh, so like the, you know, like I said, they're going after they're going after this one one character, right? They're going after this one, and if you look at the cover, like obviously becomes a part of the team. Like this is the team setup, yeah. Setup. And I love. I, it's hard for me to call her the chief, but Jane kind of has this interaction with Batman because Batman's like, "Well, you know, what are you doing? Like, just let me take them to Arkham." And she's like, "What? What has Arkham ever done anything for anybody?" They either become a villain for you or become a weapon for the Suicide Squad. And I was like, dude, this is like the, the, the dialogue. That's, that's really awesome, too, because it, it's true. Like, 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 when was the last time Arkham actually um, Helped functioned as a, as, a, as a proper, like, mental health facility, you know? Yeah, like, so, like, that, you know, that whole interaction with Batman was just, like, that, that part, I think, is what really, like, solidified this book where... I'm like, okay, I'm not waiting for the trade. Much like Clobber time, I'm like, I got to get the issues. Like, I don't I don't want to have to wait to read this. Like, it was such a good book. You also have Monsieur Mala and uh, well, the, brain, the Brain. And I there's, was waiting for you to say there were There's an options. interaction with them that's, like, kind of alarming, too, at the end. I don't, I don't want to say, but it's, like, it wasn't expected. And then you also have an appearance by Peacemaker in here. And... He's got, he's he hand selected a team from from uh, Task Force X to go after the Doom Patrol, and he, they want to, you know, they're trying to uncover secrets from them. I don't know what that's going on. So we have the main narrative with the team going doing what they're doing, right? Going after this corporation that's exploiting these new metahumans, and then you have Peacemaker, and then you have Mr. Mala and uh, uh, the Brain stuff going on too. So there's two other side side stories kind of going on simultaneously, but. Writing by Dennis Culver, phenomenal. Art by Chris Burnham, I, I'm a huge fan of his. Just such a good, fun book. We talked about Clobbering Time being a fun book. This is a fun book. This also is something that, like, it's, while it is connected to a storyline that just happened, you don't even need to read any of Lazarus' plan. You don't need to read any of it. If you want to, it'll definitely add to the, to the story, but he did it in such a way that you get the bare minimum of what you need to know but enough for you to be able to enjoy this story and the team. I, I just, I love doom patrol, dude. It's a, it's a team that I think yeah, is same. such a unique team to DC because they are a little bit similar to X-Men, you know, they are more of outcasts. They're not your typical superhero team. And it's, it's just a really fun book. I'm a little bit sad that it's only six issues. Hopefully the sales are there. Maybe, you know, like the creative team comes back and does another run with it. I know like, recent memory poison ivy was only a mini series and that just got extended to an ongoing so so yeah maybe, it can maybe happen. that'll happen dude you know definitely definitely worth uh your every single penny for that book go pick up doom patrol all right so uh you mentioning suicide squad is probably a good segue for uh, mm. my next book which is also a dc book it's waller versus wildstorm from you know dc's imprint uh black label it's written by spencer ackerman uh evan narcisse Art by Jesus Marino and uh, Michael uh, Adeye, I guess. I'm so bad with names. And uh, what's interesting is I didn't I, I didn't know anything about this creative team. And I didn't really even know anything about the 
the book until I saw it. And uh, I'm a huge fan of like, you know, the image 90 stuff. Uh, when I saw Wildstorm in it, I picked it up immediately and started flipping through it. Basically, um, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty self-contained. You know, you've got Stormwatch is one of the main character, one of the main teams in this, which is great. You know what I mean? Like those are often characters that are overlooked when people, uh, you know, pull from the Wildstorm era because everyone's like, you know, everyone's all about the authority and uh and then those kind of characters but really stormwatch is what started all of that you know right stormwatch was like sort of like where the wildstorm universe really started to come together and like form like this sort of overreaching continuity back in the day so it's nice to see those characters being played with here and this is if dude it reads like it reads like an espionage book which is a, a cool a cool take on superheroes that i we don't see enough of and i didn't even know that the writer uh spencer ackerman was a national security reporter. So he's definitely, you know, oh, extremely knowledgeable about, about that kind of a world. And he's injecting these world, these real world ideas. And another great thing, uh, basically the story is um, Lois Lane was one of the main characters. She is uh, in a country called uh, Gamora and she's trying to interview the leader of a rebellion there. And in doing so, she finds out that the U.S. government has been involved in manipulating events in this country for a long time. They're uh, using a newly recruited uh, younger Amanda Waller, who's been appointed the head of a, of a black ops station within the country to sort of get the ball go going in whatever it is they're trying to do in that country, which is still a mystery to us. So Amanda Waller isn't even the head of, of, uh, of Task Force-esque or Checkmate or any of that. Like, so it's this sort is of in like, the past? Yes, it takes place. the The time is a, a little vague, but it says the final days of the Cold War. So, like you know, that should give you kind of an idea of where it takes place. You know, and that's old school Deathstroke costume I see on the cover too, right? It is. It is. And uh, Slade is a big, or at least he's poised to be a big player in this story because although we see him a little bit, uh, you really get to see him at the end, and he's obviously gonna be a big part of it. Especially since Deathstroke has always been, you know, kind of associated with uh, the Suicide Squad here and there, and with Amanda Waller as well. Uh, I just want to show you the last page because it is a fucking great image of of Deathstroke. You know, like, oh yeah, huge, yeah. And I love the classic Deathstroke. I do, I it, do. I, I wish they the never changed it. it. Yeah, same, same. So the bulk of the story is really following Battalion, who was the uh, leader of of Stormwatch for a very long time as he is sort of questioning what Stormwatch has become. Like, does he even want to be a part of this organization anymore? Because he thought it was going to be more altruistic and that Stormwatch was supposed to be like, you know, solving problems, not manipulating events. That's where, it, where the story starts. And uh, Battalion and uh, Lois are our, are our entry point to the story. And I, I love Lois Lane as a character, man. We talked about it uh um, and one of our videos where you mentioned like Greg Rucka's like, like, you know, Lois Lane miniseries being fantastic. And she's such a great character because she's, you know, she's a huge part of the DCU and um, she's much more than just Superman's wife and a damsel in distress. Like she's a fucking whip smart investigative reporter and she's fucking fearless. You know, I mean, she'll stand up to people that Superman stands up to and she doesn't have any fucking power and she don't give a shit. Yeah. And yeah. her portrayal of the story is great, man. Like, very multi-layered. Not a mention of Clark or Superman at all. So I'm not sure where where in her relationship with him she is. But it just goes to show you that you can write about Lois without having to have Clark around. You know, she stands alone as her character, and making her the main focus of this first issue was what I really liked about it. So if you're a Lois Lane fan, and uh, the way that her character has been written in the past few years, where like they're really making her like a force to be reckoned with. You got to pick this up. And the Black Label books are always great, man. They're out of continuity. The larger format gives it a different feel. Mm. You know, like it's, it's, they're usually stories that are, that are uh, a little bit more adult in nature. And I'm not just talking F bombs and stuff like that. You know, like there's a lot of like government, the themes. like the, the themes, themes, exactly. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of that here. And it's, it's, the dialogue is really good. You know, it reads, uh, it almost reads like a Jason Bourne movie. Or, or, you know, like a James Bond movie. Like, it has those kind of elements to it. And I just, I love Amanda Waller, another great character. And I love seeing her beginnings in this. You know, how you see that 
from the very beginning, she's been a fucking manipulating bitch. You know what I mean? And like, we'll stop at nothing <laughs> to achieve what she feels is is what needs to happen. And again, great writing because although you know you could argue Amanda Waller is a villain, she doesn't see herself as a villain. As a villain, you know, she's someone that I think has a philosophy Ooh. of the end justifies the means. And she will damn her own soul if she has to to make sure that the world at large is a safer place. Whether or not her actions are actually doing that is, you know, is is yet to be seen. But that's what she feels. So you have all these players. You have Checkmate. I mean, it just it reminds me also of that that period when Greg Rucka was writing the Checkmate title and like oh, so you, know, you had like yeah exactly. So it's it's pulling from that and pulling from like the the Stormwatch like era of Wildstorm and kind of fusing them into something very unique. And I highly recommend it, man. Uh, it was a nice surprise, uh, you know, a beautiful cover. There is another cover out there that's amazing. That's an homage to the uh, uh, cover of the first issue of Stormwatch. So if you see that one, pick it up because I think that one's a little bit rare. But man, definitely worth a five ninety nine, and that's not bad for a a larger size, like you know, like square bound book that looks really nice. So another great great uh, title from Black Label, man, and and definitely pick it up if you're a Suicide Squad fan. And an old school Stormwatch fan. God damn it! Now I gotta. I want to read that. I didn't realize it was like. I love espionage, so and yeah, I, exactly. I do love Waller. I do really love Waller a lot. I think that I mean, it takes a, a special kind of character to be able to go talk shit to Batman up to his face, and she's done it multiple times. You know. Yeah, he's he's been one of my favorite characters, and and like like not to segue too much, but like even in like the DC uh un- movies, like I mean, she's probably been one of my favorite characters in those movies. You know, like. What they've done with her, you know. I mean, like Vi- the, Viola Davis, dude, is just dude. Perfect casting there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like, like she walked in. Like you would, you believe that? Like you said, you believe Amanda Waller can go up to Batman and put her fucking finger in his face and like she's not, she's not afraid. No, I if, look. Shit. If there's, if you could only keep one character or one casting from all the old DC movies and they were to reboot. That's I think that's like the one. If you told me I could only pick one, I think I'd pick Viola Davis to stay. As I would one. agree with that too, man. And yeah. I love Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. That would be my second. But Viola Davis but yeah, is just that is and, that, and that's just casting. a testament to the character of Waller. And I love that over the years they've made her such an important character in the comics. And this this comic is as much about her as it is about uh, Lois. And you know when you look at it, it is a, ca- a story about two strong women. You know that don't have powers, that both stand up to people with powers, that are both involved in this world and are easily as important uh, as players as any superpowered agent, any secret agent, anything like that. So it's just great, man. Definitely a lot of fun. And espionage, like you said, is a genre that we don't see often in comics and it works so well with superheroes. So that's my second pick. Yeah, my last pick, which I mentioned, uh, I read a book this morning right before we recorded that kind of jumped up for me. So Indigo Children by Kurt Pyers and Rockwell White, Alex Diotto, D. Kanif, and Hassan Otsman Alahu. Uh, One of my favorite letters, man. Yeah. So this book, I heard, you know, people are talking about it. I think I'm pretty sure I've read part of his book that he wrote, Olympia from Image, not that long ago. I, I think I read like the first couple. I I didn't finish it off, but I remember really liking it. I don't know what for whatever reason. I I I think it was when I was at the shop and I was just like pulling stuff and I take stuff home and I just I forgot to pull it because I was reading so much back then. But I remember really liking his writing style. This book though was phenomenal. What a good first issue. I I mean I I I, I hate to say I was blown away. Like I hate saying that. Like it, I feel like it's just like a very typical thing to say. But I was this was such a good book from the writing to the art, the coloring, the lettering. I mean, just such a great combination of all the pieces put together to make this awesome book. And, you know, you start with an epilogue. It's about children that have powers, right? Like that's like the the basis for it. Uh, So you have a two page spread where you see like it zooms, like I'll show, I'll show you. So it zooms in right with the kids on, on this page on, on my right. And you see the glowing eyes and like they're in the, in the, de- the desert, but they're obviously like with a, with a, with a sphinx, sphinx, right? Yeah. Then it jumps to five years earlier. So Alexi is the main kid that we're seeing in this book, right? And he has, he has powers, but you don't, 
you don't really know what they are because they're at an airport. He's with his mom and they go on a plane. Then it jumps to, it says war in Chechnya, 1994. And remember how we talked about having like the words, I think it was in Fist of the North Star where they would literally just put like a word as the onomatopoeia. Well, it says pain, scars, vengeance, right? And you have this dude that's all scarred up. And then you see this dude over here and he's on the plane and Alexi is like sitting there. Right. And, and his mom's like, you know, earth to Alexi come here. Right. And she's like, did you see something again? And like, so now, you know, like the mom knows there's something up with this kid. And then he like whispers in your ear. You don't see what, you don't know what he said. Cause it's one of those like things where like they do the squiggle lines. So you don't know what yeah. he's actually saying. It's fucking crazy. They're sitting on the airplane, a fucking like, uh, I forgot what they call him, the TSA or whatever, right? Comes up with a gun yeah. drawn on the dude with the scars. And he's like, don't move. I'm going to blow your, or I'll blow your fucking brains out. And then boom, the fucking airplane explodes. Then, the, the, I and I love this. I love the very cinematic to it. You know, like the yeah, way, I love yeah, when they cool. do that yeah. with titles pages. Uh, and then you, you pan out and you're in this like, interview right and there's like a professor the mom and the kid and they're interviewing him and talking about how you know alexi's very smart he uh he's so far ahead of the class and stuff and like when did you know that he had powers kind of type deal <laughs> the professor says they're without limitations so they send the kids to him to kind of see what he what they're all about what their abilities and what their limitations are and alexi has zero and then they start asking, like, you know, like, so what, how do you, how do you know about this stuff? And then he talks about his past life and it's on Mars. So this oh, kid okay. has a past life on Mars and he's like, well, what was it like on that, on that planet? And, you know, he's like, oh, it's much like earth, except we figured things out faster. Our wars were slower to ignite our conflicts longer to fester. And he, and then the teacher's like, well, what are they, what? I'm not the teacher, the interviewer, I'm sorry, says, what conflicts are you talking about? He's like the Martian Holocaust, the nuclear midnight that rendered Mars uninhabitable, the very thing I came to Earth to stop. And it fucking, then the tape goes off. And then you see who has the tape, and it's an investigative journalist. So, oh, wow, cool. So this dude is investigating. So that's basically where we go. And I, I won't like get too much more into the details, but that's the whole setup. That's like the first 10 or 12 pages. And now he's on a mission to find out what is up with these indigo children right and that's the basis of, of what we're going to see and he goes he was trying to talk to the professor trying to find out but things are being covered up because somebody comes after him and tries to kill him and then he contacts somebody else because well i'll, I'll spoil it anyway so he he ends up killing the dude that comes to kill him and he calls a friend of his and basically this guy knows how to clean it up and he goes to this compound where he's seeking out Alexi. And obviously time has passed. It's in the future now. And the epilogue is pretty pretty nuts too in terms of like the show, showcasing the powers of what Alexi has. But I, I'm probably not even doing that great of a job in terms of like really selling the book. It's just such a great concept, such a great, uh, you know, I don't feel like there's enough really good sci hard sci-fi in this and this is yeah. definitely one of my favorites of the week and i just realized we were supposed to do our mutual pick uh before we, we went into that but whatever we'll end on that we're gonna, we're gonna end with it yeah so indigo children is just a, such a phenomenal book the writing is very fast paced very like just very engaging like you talked about like the what is the genre espionage. Just called the espionage. espionage the espionage yeah. of the last book well this is definitely a genre that i feel like i don't get enough of and I, I love sci-fi, but I feel like it's very hard necessarily to do a really good sci-fi book that's something new and fresh. This kind of gave me that feeling. I'm very excited to see what comes next for this. I don't know if it's a mini series or an ongoing. I like the show, the way they show the power. I like the kind of like the kid being from Mars. Like that's his past life. He's a fucking Mars. That's interesting. Yeah. Like that was pretty cool. So um, definitely, I don't know if I sold it very well, but I, I it is definitely no, you worth, did. I, I definitely think it's worth picking up. It's uh another hit from Image, dude. I, I mean Image is constantly putting out number ones that are just phenomenal. And I think this is going to be a big hit. If you haven't read any of his stuff in the past, this will make you want to go pick up his other stuff too. So go pick it up.
I got one more, and then we'll have our final mutual pick. And uh, this one was also kind of a, an impulse buy for me. I, I um I never really seen it before, and it's uh it's it's Jeff, which I uh, I know most of these strips I think had already appeared on Marvel's uh, Infinity app, mm -hmm. but basically you know Jeff is like a little a little tiny cartoonish shark that you know runs around the Marvel universe like you know functioning almost as like a Something out of Calvin and Hobbes is the best way I can describe it, man. Like, you know, like, which I think is a big influence on this. And uh, it's just really cute, man. And it's it's Jeff having li little different encounters and adventures with different Marvel characters. And uh, what I loved about it is that it, they're all silent. So there's no word balloons. or Yeah, every, every single thing is silent. So it's all visual. And they're all one-page strips, uh, maybe two, two at the most. Dude, they're so much fun. The art is so like nice and cute. Like, you know, it, it might not be the deepest thing, but but it's a lot of fun, you know. And, and like, you know, there's great cameos from different characters from across the Marvel universe. Who's the artist? It's great, man. Uh, the art it's written by Kelly Thompson, and the artist is uh is credited as Guri Hu Guri Hiru. Oh yeah, I love his uh, art. Yeah, so yeah, I, I didn't know anything about him and I started following him on Instagram as soon as I picked up the book and looked through his feed and like great stuff, man. You know, like uh like you know, there's a there's a, a vibe of like Art Balthazar who used to uh and 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 you know like the yeah, that, that comic artist. And obviously I also do see like a bit of Bill Watterson and just comic strip art and uh you know vibes in general, which I love, man. I like see, seeing like this and and again great project from marvel man it's it's uh it's a something different definitely perfect for anyone of any age and uh you know it's it's not like silly or dumb man it's just it's just it brings a smile to your face and uh it's the perfect sort of comic that you could give to like a child and they'll love it and a great way to maybe even introduce them to the marvel universe because like you have all these characters and and it's a testament to how good the creative team is that they give this this shark such a personality mm -hmm with just like these drawings because you know like you get the idea that 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 like like Hobbes you know from Calvin and Hobbes Jeff is a little bit mischievous but he's kind-hearted and you know like maybe a little bit selfish like I get the vibe that he's a child you know mm -hmm. so he has that kind of like like feel to him and you know he's sometimes causing a few problems here and there and uh you know being like kind of a bit of a rascal but he's lovable and uh and it's it's just a lot of fun man and, and it was uh it was a nice read. You know, I read it Chilling by the Pool, which is a great way to read this book. And I can't recommend it. I think uh, I think it's a one-off because I think that uh, it does just sort of collect like the strips that have been available online mm -hmm. or through the app until now. But I hope they continue to do them, man. It's it's a nice little break from like, uh, you know, somewhat deep, dark stories. And uh, I really liked it. And uh, if they keep releasing more of these, I'll probably get them. Uh, you know, just a... A cool character and uh you know he's prime for marketing from marvel i, I you know i i would i could honestly see like plush toys and t-shirts and and other things from this concept so and and it would be a lot of fun so definitely was a surprise for me and i and i recommend it and it's it's a very i i i use the word cute not in an insulting way you know like it's, I, it's, yeah it's, i get it I'm praising it for that, you know. And, I love and, Guru Hero's artwork too. He he did the Superman Smashes the Clan with a uh, Gene Luen Yang. Oh, okay, that's where I knew the name from then, because the name was kind of familiar, but I couldn't really put it together where it was from. And again, dude, I mean, it's not easy to make something like this work. It could easily be like, oh god, it's so fucking cheesy and stupid, and like you know, fuck this cute little shark. But the, uh, Jeff is imbued with so much personality that you can't help but like it, you know, and. and mm -hmm. It could easily be, I mean, I would love to see them use it more. Like, why not use these as backup strips in, in different comics, you know? Like, like when they used to do, like, the Fred Hembeck stuff in, like, Marvel Age back in the day. Or, like, you know, it'd be just something that sort of plays around with the Marvel Universe in a fun way. You know what? I'm going to use the word fun instead of cute so much because it's just fun. It was a lot of fun to read. He's a fun character, a fun take on the Marvel Universe. And uh, it's, I recommend it, man. It's definitely pick it up if you're at the comic shop. You'll, you'll, you'll have a good time with it. Yeah, I mean th those books are always fun. I love Guru Hero though; he's a uh, awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, like I'm, I'm definitely gonna check out more of his stuff. Like, like he did like, like Spider Man, he... Venom, Double Trouble. I think he did. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's Thor Loki, here. Double yeah. Trouble also. Yeah, yeah, so definitely an artist that wasn't on my radar before, but he's gonna be now. You know, I'm yeah. definitely gonna pay attention to him. Oh yeah. Well, let's talk our last pick. 
uh, Ambassadors by Mark Miller and Frank Whiteley, who we don't get enough Frank Whiteley art. Dude, he's one of my favorite like mainstream comic uh, yeah. artists. You know, I mean, his stuff, his his stuff with uh with Grant Morrison on Batman and Robin is great. I mean, he, he's he's worked with the best of the best and always brings so much to what he does. You know, I know Flex Mentalo, New X Men, yeah. um, Jupiter's Legacy. He is such a great artist. I and I'll be honest with you, when I first Weasley, saw his art, yeah. I wasn't the biggest fan of it like on x-men when he did it with grant morrison i was like what is this dude you know like they just it he's jarring at first man that's a good point yeah right but it grew on me to the point where i'm like man i wish he would have just drawn the entirety of grant morrison's run you know i wish we had him on the book the entire time because there's a weirdness i mean although he draws very crisp and clean there is a sort of surreal weirdness to the way he draws as well you know like yeah it's he's hard He's hard to describe because he's so original, you know, and like I, 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 I don't even really know how to describe his art because, like I said, it, it is crisp and clean. He's great at capturing like like really like fantastic, like almost still ph- photographic moments, but they still have an energy and like a weird vibe to them, like a weird surrealness. Yeah, so this this book is kind of interesting in the sense that like, you know, I just named the creative team, but each issue of the six issue miniseries is a different artist. All of them are sick, dude. Like, you got, I know Mateo Scalera is going to be on one of the issues. Um, See, I didn't know that. I thought Quietly was going to be the artist going forward, but that, no, each that actually issue makes it is, even more interesting. Yeah, each issue is different. And, like, look, the the cover says that 8 billion people, six can have superpowers. Who do you choose? And that's each one is obviously going to spotlight a different character. Each one's going to have a different artist. I love, I, I love the opening of the book where you have like, First of all, it's Mexico, 1986. You see this character slide in to the panel, right? It's a little ape, and he breaks open a vending machine, and he's just chilling yeah. out there. And and then all of a sudden, like, this car comes in, and I love this, dude. I, I love the way Frank White I know, draws. I know what panel you're talking about, yeah. And just, like, you know, just sh- stops that, the That's man. what I was talking about. Like, he, he is fantastic at those kind of moments. Yeah, he's he's amazing at these, dude. And he just gets better. He just gets better from like where, where you see him in the beginning of his career to where he is now. It, it's insane. And like you just so you see this like he stops the thing and then this random fucking dude in a suit just comes up. And what does he call him? Oh, his name's Jamie. He's like your yeah. friends have missed you back in Scotland. And he's like, I got a bag of Skittles. For you. <laughs> yeah. Just put the truck down. You know, and that's something Mark Miller, like, I don't know. I think another writer writes that line and I'm, I I might think like, dude, that's corny as fuck. But like, I, yeah. I know Mark Millar's sensibilities and it's just so funny. And he's like, okay, if you, if you come back to your big orange pen, we'll play your favorite Simple Minds album. And the fucking, the fucking Abe's face, dude, look at that. Yeah, dude. So, so unamused. Right. And like, as he's looking, you, you get like this part to where he's, it's like almost like, He's looking at him through a lens, right? And then I, I just actually noticed this right now, but one of the eyes is red. So yeah. that's that's why he's looking through his lens and it tells him, do not harm. And then he talks and he has a Scottish accent, you know? Yeah. So he's like, so he tells him like, he tells him which names of the albums. He's like, no, actually I was thinking of this album. And he's like, all right, good man. You know? And then they walk off and he's like, I was just testing you. And then we pan to current time and we're in antarctica and there's a plane flying over and there's this like random like futuristic looking city in a bubble uh by the way the the way he does the clouds in here yeah dude i noticed that too like like he has a way of of drawing everyday things and giving them this like like i like i said earlier like this just very unique like almost surreal feel like i mean he he draws and that and that's I think the 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 thing he does most interesting is that like he can draw what any other artist would draw and it would just look like a standard like cloud scene. He gives it some kind of vibe that's like that's just slightly weird enough that that gives it like a sci-fi feel. Yeah, I mean, and look, dude, there's so much white on the page, and to make that look good, I think has like I mean, it can be hard, right? Like especially you're doing clouds while also you're seeing this city that's surrounded by like snow you know so he's doing clouds and snow within the same panel and like 
you can definitely tell the difference. It's not like you're questioning what you're looking at. You know, I think that that's also very important, you know, and you, so you have this plane flying overhead and then it takes a deep dive into the ocean, right? And you see this character who's the character that we see on the cover. It's this superhero or this person with superpowers, rather not a superhero. And then the old man wakes up in this like bunker, right? Fast forward. So like you get to Washington, D.C., Operation Blue Sky, a top secret thing. Uh, where it's this actor it's kind of to me this kind of reminded me of what people say the moon landing was where like the government faked the moon landing and like that's why you yeah see i the love flag that, blowing. that part of it and like you know mark one thing I, i've always loved about mark millar is uh his ability to sort of like bring in these historical events and like inject them into these like sci-fi like superhero stories and make them part of of uh of the continuity, especially like conspiracy theories and things, things like that. Like he's Mark Miller is great at coming up with the high concept, but he he's also great at at making them much more than just a high concept. Like you know, he's you know he's he's obviously like someone that's like you know very very much studied like the art of like the old school Hollywood elevator pitch. But it's more than that when he you know like his stories are great elevator pitches, but he brings in all these elements like historical facts historical like you know conspiracy theories things that that like that that flesh it out and you see that in this title also man that was one of my favorite parts of the book yeah. was that like idea that the government tried to create a fake superhero and i'm like I i'm surprised that didn't actually really happen because like, yeah dude i mean know, I, look yeah. i love that kind of stuff too and it's like look it's a to scare the hell out of the soviets and that's what yeah. the space race was we were trying to beat russia to space which is why like there is that conspiracy theory like did they even really land on the moon you know, yeah. and, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't put it past the I'm not saying we've never landed on the moon, but I'm not saying Maybe we didn't want. We, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Not, yeah. It, it's great to speculate on. And like, that's what what makes it such a good thing to inject into a story. Exactly. You know, and I, so it's, I, it's just like it, it, it gives you like that. Well, maybe, maybe, you know what I mean? Like, and it hooks you, man. And like that. As much as I was on board when, 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 at the beginning of the book, I was really pulled in when it got to that, you know? Yeah, I, and I, I also love the a bunch of the oh shit moments, like the 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 main character, like you know she's in prison and she's using this like avatar like body to communicate, and then like dude. the way she escapes from prison dude. is her old body blows her fucking yes. brains out while her consciousness is transferred into the new one. I'm like, I've never seen this concept used like that. Like no, another this, thing Miller ex ex excels at is like these shocking moments that are actually really clever ways of pushing the narrative forward. It's not just shock for shock's sake. And I know he gets criticized for that a lot, but I will argue that like he d uses shocking moments very effectively. Yes. And, uh, you know, I just, I'll be honest with you, the main pull for me for this book was Quietly. At first. I mean, that was why I, that's why I reviewed it for the comic speed and they asked me to review it. And I'm, I, I immediately said yes, because, I mean, I, I do like Mark Millar, but I'm more of a Quietly fan than I am a Millar fan, you know? Same. And look, so, yeah. he writes, and, and Miller, fucking, he's writing so much now, and it's like through the Netflix deal, and it's like sometimes I'm like, do I want to read this, or is this just a pitch to become a TV show or a movie? Right, right, so, right. And, fair and fair look, enough, yeah. And I'm not judging him, dude. You know what I mean? Like, get your money, bro. Like, comic books is not something that you can become a millionaire from anymore unless you have pitches that become adapted right i'm glad i picked this up is, is is what i'm saying i'm glad that because i do like miller's writing it's not like i don't like his stuff i love nemesis i love all this a lot of this stuff but there yeah. is a lot that i haven't been reading over the past few years i haven't read magic order i haven't read um i think there's two other, two or three other series that i haven't read i kind of like want to go back and read them now i also realized i haven't ever talked about mark miller on on the channel you know like yeah. and i have read a lot of his stuff and i've liked a lot of his stuff you know and I kind of want to go back and read maybe a trade or something and talk about it with you. You know, like I definitely think I mean, that he's got a great track record, man. Kick ass does. was fantastic. Yeah. That miniseries he did for Marvel called 1985, I thought was really, really cool, man. And one that doesn't get talked about often enough. And like, again, a great concept. He's, and like you said, I mean, he's someone obviously that like loves comics, but is also trying to branch out into other forms of media. And like, I'm not going to hate him for that, man. You no, know, like he, not at all. he's not, he's not, he clearly loves comics because he's been a writer for years and he's had a, a number of hits and he's written some great stuff. 
And, uh, you know, does he have the ambition to go to branch out and, like, you know, create TV shows and movies? Sure. And there's nothing wrong with that, you know? Look, he loves nothing comics, too, like you said. He has a fucking YouTube channel where he's interviewing creators. He doesn't have yeah. to take the time out of his day to do that. He doesn't. No. And, and look, no matter what he's going to make from YouTube, it's not even going to compare to the movie and television deal that he signed with Netflix. So he's doing it because he loves comics. And he's yeah. interviewing these creators and taking the time out of his day to talk with them. And, and I think that that's awesome. Another great thing he's fantastic at, I think probably one of the best writers that does this, is he knows how to pick the right artist for the right project. He is great at 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 bringing in the artist that's going to push his idea into the realm that it needs to, you know? He yeah, did totally. it with John Romita Jr. with Kick-Ass, you know? He did it with, he's done it with Frank Quietly, like, many times. He did it with Jorge Jimenez in the, in the uh, you the know, in the nemesis. current, like, your nemesis so like it's 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 fucking great man and i'm i'm i i always at least i'm gonna pay attention and give a glance into what he's doing like maybe i won't pick all of it up because you know again you know we're all, we're all on a budget when it comes to comics yeah. but i'm i'm excited to see where this title goes and uh, here, it was a dude. nice surprise i also like the line where uh uh chun hey is uh asking <laughs> what was the name of the british children's character that fetishized overconsumption <laughs> they're like, oh, yeah. and they're like oh it's willy wonka and she's like just think of me as william wonka but the winners all get superpowers instead of sugary snacks and it's a great concept dude like hey it like is. i figured out how to get people powers all right so let's have let's let's have a you know like like in my review for the comics we almost you know said like it's almost like a, a satire on all these shows like shark tank and like you know like stuff oh, you know where, good... where people you know where people are going to argue why they deserve to be given this extraordinary gift to, to bring something to the world, you know? Yeah. And like, you know, he's bringing that to the superhero genre, you know, again, great at a high concept, but he's great at taking it further and actually executing it because he knows how to flesh it out. He knows how to bring in the right artist, you know, and, and I, I think this could be a hit for him, you know? I definitely think so, dude. I I'm digging the book. I know he's got another book with a uh, Pepe Larraz where it's going to, pick all of his like a lot of his characters i am so excited for that you know yeah. like i want to see how the fuck is he going to bring all these stories to cross over you know what i mean like i don't care what anyone says i'm excited to see how he does that just oh just on a, on a yeah so am i again dude he's he's still uh, what i love about mark millar is that he remembers that at the end of the day comics are supposed to be fucking fun you know what i mean yeah. and his comics are always if nothing they're fun to read fun concepts you know and uh, i i've always been a fan of his you know not my favorite writer but he's someone that i will always pay attention to and i will always at least give some of my time to see what he's working on next yeah dude i think that um we should definitely talk some some mark miller uh, books uh i agree uh, man yeah so we'll, we'll come we'll, up with we'll, a list bro yeah i mean there's a lot dude so we'll definitely yeah. throw some up soon but another great book um for this week a great week of books um, Every week, I, I, I haven't looked at. I haven't looked at next week. Actually, that's not true. I did look at next week. There was an image book that looked kind of interesting. I can't remember the name right now, but uh, some dope stuff coming out next week. Twenty twenty three so far, some great stuff. I know that comic shops are kind of. I know numbers have been down in terms of like that kind of stuff. So get out there and support your local comic shop. Get out there and pick up some comics from them. You know, if you have some extra bucks, you're looking for something to pull. Check our back out. Check Comic Lounge for some of our recent reviews of some trades that you can go pick up. I know uh, there's a lot of good stuff. So go out there, support your shop. Um, and we'll be back next week with another episode of the Weekly Pull. And make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our links are down below. Hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you're notified every time a new vid goes up. And on that note, we're out. We'll catch you next week, guys.